this is a chip. You'd find it in your phone, your hard drive, your camera, or maybe even your calculator. The IC industry is worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Countries actually fight over it. The launch of Sputnik is like the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus. In the 20th century, the Soviet Union and the US were engaged in a space race. I believe that this nation should commit itself of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The race ended up with the most insane human achievement. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, that looks beautiful. Today's chip race, however, has nothing to do with distance. It's all about downsizing. This nail-sized chip is the brain of your smartphone or the computer which you're using to watch this video right now. The chip is packed with countless of these pin-shaped things we call transistors. Transistors are used to perform calculations. The more you can pack in a single chip, the faster it becomes. Over the years, engineers have found ways of shrinking transistors to microscopic level, from packing thousands of these onto a chip. Now, with over 3.3 billion transistors, we were able to pack 11.8 billion transistors. 15.3 billion transistors on it, the most powerful ever. The chip race. It's simply a race between semiconductor companies in bringing the smallest process nodes to the market. This race only concerns cutting edge chips, meaning the smallest ones possible, usually measured in nanometers. Well, who are the major players? The two leading players in the industry are from Taiwan and South Korea. Both are capable of producing 5 nanometers process nodes at commercial volume. While the runner ups are all stuck at 7 to 10 nanometers, TSMC and Samsung have already started development on 3 nanometers nodes. The US is two years behind, China at least four years. Yet somehow they seem to be the loudest in the race. Well, I guess it's true that empty vessels make the most noise. So before we dive into the race, we must take two minutes to understand the semiconductor industry to get an idea of who the major players are and the roles they play. But if you'd like to ignore all that, you're welcome to skip to this timestamp. But mind you, it's like watching Game of Thrones from season three. It would look cool on screen, but you wouldn't be able to follow. There are three stages to the production line. Design, manufacture, test assembly, and packaging. That was a lie. There are actually way more steps than that, but I wouldn't stress over them. Companies used to do all three steps in-house. Since the 80s, the industry split these departments up into specialized companies, each being responsible for an individual stage. Hence Fabless, Foundry, and outsourced semiconductor assembly and test companies were born. So, what does a foundry do? They don't design, they don't do retail, they simply make the chips. Companies spend fortunes in R&Ds and equipments and to build these dustless fabrication plants. The foundry industry is monstrously competitive. Here are some of the names you might have heard of. TSMC is the largest of them all, accounting for more than half of the global market cap. They only take care of the manufacturing part. But before it gets made, someone must first design it. Designs can be done in offices, no fabrication plants needed. Hence, they're usually called fabless. Let's use smartphone as an example. First, you design the chip, then you give it a name. Anything that sounds sophisticated will do, like Snapdragon 855, Kira 9000, I Love You 3000, I mean, who cares? Then you send your design over to the fabs for manufacturing. In a way, it's like surrogation. Once your chip was born and tested, they'll hand it back to you. Feel free to put it in your latest product line and voila, customers will queue overnight outside of your shop. Here are some of the famous fabless companies you might have heard of. It's worth noting that High Silicon is owned by Huawei, a Chinese mobile company. There are also companies that specialize in packaging and testing, we call them OSATs, but they are not as competitive as the other two. Finally, we still have control freak companies like Intel and Samsung who prefer keeping everything in-house. They also manufacture chips for other fabulous companies too. Due to technological gap and globalization, the supply chain network is distributed all over the world. Trust me, our phones have seen way more than us. Now that we've gotten this out of the way, we can finally start the game. One of the protagonists in this game is SMIC, the biggest foundry in China. 
They've recently announced that they're able to achieve process nodes close to 7 nanometers, which they refer to as N plus 1. Experts actually say it's closer to 8 nanometers, but let's not get hung up on my new detail. We'll just call it 7 nanometers for now. And here's where they run into serious bottlenecks. Mainly because of this. See, to pack billions of transistors into the size of a fingernail, it can only be done via extreme ultraviolet lithography. The only company in the world that produces these monster machines is Asmo, a Dutch company. That's actually what Samsung and TSMC are currently using to make their cutting edge chips. In order to achieve anything below 7 nanometers, one needs this equipment, which by the way, is worth more than 100 million euros. Well, are you kidding? That's like pocket change for SMIC. I'll take two, thank you very much. What they're about to experience is the longest shipment delay. Turns out that the US government has intervened. They've convinced the officials in Netherlands to withhold ASMO's export license. Without this critical machine, Smake is likely stuck at 7 nanometers. Or maybe in a couple of years, they might decide to release this machine to China when everybody else is already making 3 nanometer ships. It'll be like receiving a PlayStation 3 this Christmas. I mean, do they still have games? Aside from its manufacturing potential, Chinese phone manufacturers are affected too. As I've mentioned before, High Silicon is a fabulous company owned by Huawei. High Silicon specializes in chip design, including Huawei's latest Kirin series. It was designed in-house, then shipped to TSMC for manufacturing. 2020 was supposed to be a big year for Huawei. It overtook Apple and Samsung to become the number one smartphone player in the world in July. This year, Huawei released new products that use 5 nanometers technology, something only Apple was capable of. But again, enter the greatest cock block ever. The US government has intervened again with a foreign direct product rule. How does that differ from the entity list imposed on Huawei in 2019? The entity list refrains US companies from supplying certain components to Huawei. It's a domestic policy. Foreign direct product rule, on the other hand, requires every company in the universe who uses US technology to apply for a license before supplying Huawei. So not only are we cutting ties, our partners will be cutting ties with you as well. Especially you, TSMC. Of course, Huawei tried to get around the restrictions and said, you know what, we don't need to design our own chips. Let's just buy chips from other fabulous companies. It actually worked for a while, but the US being US said, nice try, but no. So, let's recap. Due to all sorts of export restrictions and key machinery ban, when it comes to making cutting edge chips, they can't make, they can't outsource, they can't buy, I mean, they've snookered the entire Chinese semiconductor industry. Unless there's a miracle, I don't see any way around it. Not to mention, that's only the manufacturing side. High Silicon also has other concerns on designs, regarding EDA software and architectures, but those are not as pressing. We'll get to that next time. Over the years, Chinese officials tried to convince TSMC to make chips in China. TSMC was like, fine, but don't bother asking for our most advanced foundries. I mean, don't even think about it. As a result, TSMC actually has a 60 nanometers fab in Nanjing, China. Funny thing, the founder of TSMC actually predicted last year. He said, if the tension between US and China keeps growing, TSMC will become a highly contested spot for geopolitical strategists. Well, soon after that, US successfully convinced TSMC to invest $12 billion and move their 5 nanometers production to Arizona. They've also agreed to do research and development on US soil. Plus, they train hundreds of American engineers in Taiwan so they can run these future plants. That's about it. The Chinese semiconductor industry is currently stuck at a bottleneck. Meanwhile, the US government is trying to take the liberty to seal that bottle. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new in this video, please share it to your friends, click subscribe and the bell icon to get notified for similar weekly interesting content. For instance, is the global economy going backwards? Click on last week's video and I'll bring it to you straight in 5 minutes. See you next week.